We focused a lot on the negative sides mm -hmm. of, yeah. of midlife, yep. but you know, there's a lot of positive and good. It is a time of opportunity as well, developing and building wisdom and being able to pass this knowledge on to younger generations. And so not only are there challenges, but it's yep. certainly important to think about these more positive angles as well. Welcome to Gen X Mindscape, the podcast dedicated to exploring the complexities of midlife and the pursuit of a purposeful life. I'm your host, Kyle, here to accompany you on this journey. I'm so excited that you've decided to join me for this episode that features a really interesting conversation with Dr. Frank J. Inferna. Frank is an associate professor of psychology at Arizona State University, and he's been conducting some really innovative and interesting research related to midlife. One area that he's been investigating is what's unique about midlife right here, right now. It's a unique time to be a midlifer. It's different than when our parents were midlifers and our grandparents and our ancestors. And I found it really insightful and helpful to talk with Frank about what's distinctive about being a midlifer right now, as we certainly have different challenges and opportunities than generations before us. Frank has also done some really interesting work on resilience in midlife. And he shares what the science is saying about how we can cultivate resilience as we engage in meaningful pursuits in this phase of our life. I found it to be an enlightening, encouraging, and clarifying experience, and I hope you do as well. And so without further delay, here's my conversation with Dr. Frank J. Inferna. Welcome to the show. So glad you're here, Frank. Yeah, thanks, Kyle, for having me. Yeah, awesome. Well, could you just start out by giving our listeners some insight into your background and how you became interested in the topics we'll be discussing today? Yeah, absolutely. So my research beginning all the way in grad school was focused on development in older adulthood and looking at perceptions of control and how that links to healthy aging outcomes. And ever since then, I feel like I've started to be interested in earlier this is of the lifespan. Now I'm settling on midlife. And what really got my interest going was about five or six years ago, I started a empirical research project that was funded by the John Templeton Foundation. And we set out to study middle-aged adults. So for this sample, we recruited people ages 50 to 65, and we gave them a monthly questionnaire for two mm. years. And they completed questions on life events that happen, their well-being, physical health, and character strengths. And what really got my interest going was within these monthly questionnaires, we had them give an open-ended response of, did anything else happen this month? And it was truly fascinating to see some of the responses and what people were dealing with during that past month. Some of the things people were writing in about was, you know, during this past month, my parents were moving to town to be close to us because they're aging and just helping coordinate their move and then set them up with mm -hmm. new doctors and vets. And so really coordinating the, the aging process of their parents, but then also dealing with whether their children are moving in and out of state and a lot of financial and mm -hmm. health issues arose during those open-ended comments. Yeah, it really is a unique time. Another thing I've really appreciated about your writing is that you've been writing about midlife and how it's unique in this time, in this age. So could you just give us a little background on how you're defining midlife and then what's unique about this time and these days for people in midlife? Yeah, so midlife, we broadly consider, you know, when you're between the ages of 40 to 65, plus or minus five to 10 years. I mean, it really is unique to each individual, but that's generally the broad scope of the age range that we're thinking about. And what's particularly interesting nowadays, there's been quite a bit of research in the last 10 years, I would say, focusing on middle-aged adults and looking at cross-national comparisons of how mm -hmm. it is that middle-aged adults are doing today compared to other parts of the world. And something that we, in writing this review paper that we published several years ago, is that we found that middle-aged adults nowadays, right, particularly those who following the, the Great Recession, are 
doing more poorly in their mm. mental and physical health compared to uh, middle-aged adults who were in midlife during the 90s and early 2000s. So we think definitely the ramifications of the Great Recession have had their long-term effects, particularly mm -hmm. for middle-aged adults when we think about what all they're involved with and their various life roles. So they're firmly embedded within the workplace, most likely be a homeowner, and that mm -hmm. certainly has its ramifications, or it did, the Great Recession did, but also looking at it intergenerationally as well. So young adults nowadays are more likely to be living with their parents mm -hmm. who are most likely in midlife because you know, they're having a, a tougher time securing long-term employment. And even if mm. they are able to find a well-paying job, housing is expensive. And that was certainly has risen because of the COVID-19 pandemic and also mm -hmm. currently now. I mean, mortgage rates are 7% or mm -hmm. hovering around that, which makes it very challenging to purchase a home. We focused a lot on the negative sides mm -hmm. of, yeah. of midlife, yep. but you know, there's a lot of positive and good. It is a, a time of opportunity as well, you know, in terms of say within your career, if you're moving up the the ladder in your career, leadership, developing and building wisdom and being able to pass this knowledge on to younger generations and oftentimes because people are living these longer lives there is that opportunity to potentially kind of pivot within midlife to a mm. new career with the asterisks there of if you have the financial means to mm -hmm. say take some time off and retrain or go back to school and get a master's or, or a certificate mm -hmm. or other programs so especially with people living longer you have to mm. You may hit 50 or 55 and be like, you know what, what I've been doing for the last 20 years, it's been fun, it's been fine, but mm -hmm. there's something more that I would like to discover. And so not only are there challenges, but it's yep. certainly important to think about these more positive angles as well. Definitely. And I know that you've been writing about a cross-global perspective. What are some similarities and differences that you found around the globe? Yeah, absolutely. So my current research project is we're looking at studying historical changes in mental and physical health in middle-aged adults in the U.S. and from nations in Europe, but also Asia and Mexico. So looking at whether these current trends of declining mental and physical health among middle-aged adults nowadays. Is it specific to the U.S. or is this also similarly happening across the world? And so we're using these longitudinal panel surveys that have assessed tens of thousands of people, and which is really great to have access to this treasure trove of yeah. data. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a paper that kind of led to this larger project is where we looked at changes in mental and physical health in uh, middle-aged adults from the U.S., Germany, Australia, South Korea, and Mexico. And there we found middle-aged adults nowadays are reporting more depressive symptoms and exhibiting poorer memory compared to earlier born middle-aged adults in the U.S. And that this was specific to the U.S. We didn't see these similar trends mm. within South Korea and Mexico and Germany as well. And then another aspect of the paper is to try to identify some of the potential yep. reasons that this could be specific to the U.S. as compared to other nations. Yes, I think that's just so interesting. What are some of your hypotheses about why that might be? Right now, it's just speculative, but we hope to be able to test this in the upcoming years with the data that we're working with. And mm -hmm. I mean, for one, if we look at various policy differences across the U.S. and say, you know, Germany or France and other nations in Europe. So there's more of a safety net when it comes to yep. family and employment related 
program. So let's just take, you know, look at the the cost of daycare. You know, within the U.S., you're probably thinking, depending on where you live, I mean, in the Phoenix area, it's somewhat reasonable. And I say that in quotes because it's probably around $1,000 a month or so, depending mm-hmm. on where you go for yep. one child in daycare. Whereas I have a colleague in Germany who he was ashamed to tell me that he's paying 300 euros a month for daycare for his mm-hmm. daughter. And I just absolutely blew my mind. And in other parts of Germany, so I lived in Berlin for two years before coming to ASU. And there it's fully subsidized, so it's free. Obviously, there's a trouble mm-hmm. finding a spot. But if you think about just the pressure that relieves financially mm-hmm. that you're not you know, putting so much of your income towards daycare so that you can go to work. And if you also think about it, if you have less money to go, you know, for paying daycare, then you can put that towards your retirement Mm -hmm. account or maybe towards home improvements that you need or family vacations. And also there's the healthcare side of things. There's differences in terms of healthcare coverage, at least within the U.S. and especially when you compare to some European nations and, you know, how much are you paying out of pocket expenses mm-hmm. or not to, another financial pressure as well. Yeah, it's a really interesting comparison. We've been talking about stressors, but I really like how you've also been talking about resilience. We looked at various aspects such as social support and whether or not people have people to go to in times of need or that they can count on, not necessarily that they actually engage with others in that regard, but just knowing that you have someone to go to in times of need has Mm -hmm. been shown to be a strong resource to rely on and that promotes more positive outcomes in the face of adversity. So definitely social support is is a big one. Another one that I haven't really studied myself as much, but I've seen quite a bit of research on is looking at purpose in Mm -hmm. life, uh, particularly within transitions that individuals are experiencing in midlife, whether it be their children Mm -hmm. going off to college or whether people are retiring or transitioning into a new job or a new phase in Mm -hmm. in their life and just developing a sense of purpose and knowing you know, something you find enjoyable and that gives you joy and kind of, I think something that goes along with that is a sense of identity as well. Mm. Because say with your children going off to college, you may be, your life centers around them so much and then they're off to college and you're like, oh, what do I do? Who am I? Everything is about shuttling your kids to and from school and different activities. So are you having that sense of purpose of engaging in something more beyond yourself or what brings you great joy is certainly particularly helpful in promoting resilience. Definitely, definitely. Frank, as we get towards the end of our conversation, what are some key takeaways you'd like the listeners to take from our conversation and from your work? This is, I would say this is partially research and partially my own kind of experiences as entering midlife. I think managing your expectations when Mm. it comes to, you know, work, family, your own health and and well-being. And for me, sometimes it's a struggle to just kind of know, you know, living in the moment and appreciating Mm -hmm. where you are and not so much always thinking about future-oriented aspects or oh, I didn't get to work as much today. Well, that's probably because a kid Mm. was sick or there was just other madness happening. So I think certainly managing expectations and my older son loves Daniel Tiger. And I think in one of the, I think this is from Daniel Tiger. In one of the episodes, they were just talking about running your own race and not always comparing yourself to others. And if you compare yourself to someone else thinking, oh, they look so much happier Mm. than us, it may not always be the case. So I think trying to run your Mm. own race and manage your expectations is especially helpful to think about and know that 
yeah, you're not the only middle-aged adult out there who may be struggling or having <laughs> these challenges, trying to manage the, the complexities and taking it all in. But knowing that if you do need help to mm-hmm. reach out, and I'm sure there are others who could provide advice and knowing what you are going through. <laughs> it's amazing how wise some of those PBS kids shows could be. Sometimes I think we're sometimes getting more from it than our kids. Yeah, I was just, <laughs> we were just sitting there watching it. I was like, oh my gosh, you are brilliant, Daniel Tiger. So yeah, I guess another take home of this, of midlife is just watch more children's shows, right? Like Daniel <laughs> Tiger and Bluey. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're gaining that wisdom and you're spending that quality time with your kids and which speaking of somebody with kids with a little bit old who are uh, older, I don't regret any times I watched PBS with my kids. No, it's truly a fun time. Yeah, exactly. Well, Frank, you're living this and you're researching this and I'm just really excited to share this with the listeners. So thanks so much for joining us today. Yeah, absolutely. It's been a pleasure and thank you again for having me. Thanks so much for joining me today for this insightful conversation with Dr. Frank Inferna. I hope his perspectives and his work have given you some valuable insights for your own journey through midlife, and I just really appreciate you listening today. It's really a joy to share these discussions, and I'm sending my best to each and every one of you. So until next time, keep exploring, stay curious, and stay true to yourself. Hey there, listeners. I just wanted to take a moment to express my heartfelt gratitude for listening to this podcast. Your support and feedback keep me motivated to continue growing and crafting episodes that are meaningful and helpful for you on your journey. That's why I'm inviting you to join our Gen X Mindscape community page on Facebook. It's a great space to share your feedback on the show, suggest future episode topics, or simply connect with fellow listeners. Also, don't hesitate to leave me a voice message over at genxmindscape.com by clicking on leave a voice message at the top of the page. Whether you choose to remain anonymous or provide your name and email, it's entirely up to you. Once again, thanks so much for listening. I'm definitely looking forward to hearing from you.